Hello, everyone. Hello. How are you doing? How is it going there? I hope everything is okay. Um, just I decided to start this webinar with the words long time no see. You know, we were so busy with all those projects we are going to share with you today. So let's get started. The first part of our webinar is the welcome speech by our founder and CEO of SAR Teaching and Learning, Mr. Samad Samadov. So, uh, thank you very much, Ida. It's not going to be that much long. Uh, just a few words. So, I guess that many of you uh, who are watching this webinar live now, you're pretty much uh, familiar with uh, us, with our company. So, that's uh, another uh, uh, series of webinars that uh, we do organize uh, free. Uh, of course, uh, we always think about you. And we want that uh, you always be on the way of uh, development. So welcome everybody. And our today's guest is going to be a really brilliant one uh, with a lot of amazing and very much productive uh, uh, offers, I would say. So um, have a good uh, webinar. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I can see a couple of comments. Just hello, Tayyiba. Hello, Iran. Hello, Miss Natalia. Hello from Turkey. Hello from Ukraine. Also, hello from Azerbaijan. Sorry, someone for saying this instead of you. Okay. Anyway, let's get started. So, the first thing I'd like you to know that uh, SR Teaching and Learning offers professional development for English language and English language teachers across the globe. And the main point for today is we're going to have this hashtag like SR webinar more. <clears throat> as far as you know, the topic for today, uh, one less is more. So this is the reason why we have exactly this hashtag. And what I'd like you to do is just to share your feedback later after the webinar. Um, and with the help of this hashtag, we'll be able to find you, to find your accounts and to share your feedback on our um, official web pages. Hello, Miss Inna. Hello, Alanak. Hello, Morocco. I suppose this is Morocco, I do believe. Uh, Alanak, are you from Morocco? Let me know, please. So the next thing I'd like you to know that um, on the 31st of October, we're going to start uh, the TKT preparation course for module one. And of course, this is unique opportunity to start learning from those wonderful trainers. So let me tell you, uh, the trainers of this course are uh, Mr. Paul Harvey, who is a Celta and Delta tutor, and also Ms. Rashida Gulzim, TKT Cambridge tutor. So please come and join. Here you can see that we're going to um, starting on um, Sundays and Saturdays, like three hours per day. And you can see exactly the agenda of this course or outline of this course. And you can see that we're going to cover all the units of the TKT module one and be sure that after this course, you'll be able to take this exam and actually to pass this exam and to get that nice and precious band four. Yeah, also, I'd like you to know that nowadays we are rather active on our Instagram account. So please, um, if you're an Instagram um, person, so find us there, like uh, at sr.teaching. Uh, what you can find there? <clears throat> Every day we share our news and updates. We share practical ideas. And I should tell you, uh, from time to time, we even share our lesson plans. So actually, you can find feedbacks and who knows, maybe the next feedback will be yours exactly. Um, then we have a wonderful game, um, Letters Matter, where you can participate live with me, actually. So everything you should do just to go live, to send me a request, and then to start playing and get some kind of bonuses from SR Teaching and Learning. Also, we have TKT Stories, TKT Glossary, so you can check it. And if you want to check something, you can always go to Highlights and find that TKT. And um, if you want to get to know more about the company, you can go to highlight about us and find all the needed information there as well. So come and join. We are happy to see you there. And there we can answer all your questions immediately. And the next thing I'd like you to know that this is the first webinar. I mean, this is the first October, September, October webinar. And the next one will be in one week. Here's the invitation. So the next webinar will be around for by Lana Betts from Cambridge. 
it will be the webinar on creative writing. So please come and join. Starting from tomorrow, we're going to launch the registration process for that webinar as well. The next thing, you know, um, today we're going to have the webinar when less is more a practical guide. But before we start, I'd like you to know more about this person who's going to uh, tell you about all those wonderful ideas you can use during your lessons or during the preparation time for your lessons. So the main uh, point I'd like to share today that uh, Ms. Ina Pinkowska, our today's presenter, she runs a wonderful club for teachers, um, Talking Teachers Club. And <clears throat> I'd like you to check it because it's a really nice way for you to um, find like-minded colleagues. So here I included just, yeah, let me say just brief. I included brief description of that uh, Talking Teachers Club, and you can find Miss Ina on Instagram as well, um, like English underscore vocabulary. Yeah, if you are not Russian speaking or Ukrainian speaking person, it doesn't matter. You can always send her your uh, ideas, your messages in English, and she will send you back her answers. And then you can join that Talking Teachers Club. And um, I will send you this presentation as well for you to check all the information about Talking Teachers Club. So you can see here we have the agenda for that club and you can check all the details as well. And what is more today, I went to her Instagram account and there you can find in highlights like TTC, teacher, uh, Talking Teachers Club uh, reviews or feedbacks. And I found lots of wonderful feedbacks. And this one impressed me a lot. I mean, this big one, and you can read there, like, if any project comes up, I'll probably get signed up by default. So, yeah, guys, please check this project, and I'm pretty sure that you will be in love with it. So, um, and here we go. So, let me introduce our guest, our presenter, Miss Ina Piankowska. Hello, great to be here. Thank you for so many kind words here. <laughs> Okay, great. So, um, Mr. Yeah, Thank good you. luck. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, should I add uh, your presentation? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I guess. Uh... Yeah. So we have it. Can you put it into the presentation mode? Yeah, great. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Uh huh. All right. Is it visible yet? Yeah, it is visible. Just let me say hello to Miss Inna Bortnik, uh, Tamar Deliza from Georgia. Hello. Yeah, great. So let's get started. Wish you luck. Thank you very I'm much. Sure that everything will be okay. So I, I'm going to enjoy this webinar. Okay. All right. So let, let, let's get the ball rolling, uh, as it were. So uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you, everyone, for joining in, uh, for joining this webinar, for making time and um, being part of this event. Um, I believe that uh, by the end of this webinar, you will be equipped with a number of tools and tips and ideas that you will want to try out with your students in your classroom. And I sincerely hope that this webinar will be um, a good time investment for you and for your professional development. Uh, I'd like to say a few words about uh, like why you are supposed to listen to me for the whole hour uh, or so. Um, first of all, uh, like I'm, I'm very passionate about teaching English and I've been an English teacher for uh, more than 17 years. Uh, most, most of this time I've spent teaching English at a university. That is until uh, I discovered and had to go at uh, online teaching. And I've been teaching online for around five years. Uh, however, uh, last year I decided to uh, make some changes in my career and uh, throughout uh, i mean since i started teaching teaching online i worked for one of the online schools but a year ago i decided to to go solo and develop my uh, brand as a teacher and within the last year i've conducted uh, five webinars slash workshops uh, for language schools i've also taken part into C cpd events for teachers as a speaker one of them being um teachers voice marathon organized by uh, sr teaching and learning and recently, uh, 
I um, had a new experience for me. I I was a guest speaker uh, for a uh, for a podcast episode, which was called um, "Passion for Vocabulary." Uh, I'm also a teacher blogger, and um, although my following isn't so huge, it's a little bit more than fifteen hundred followers. But most of them are very active, and um, a lot of them are English teachers as well. And that is why I wanted to come up with something for them. And that, that's how the idea of Talking Teachers Club came up. Um, and I launched the first season, as I call it, uh, back in spring this year. And since that time, I've launched two more seasons, so uh, three on the whole. So uh, Talking Teachers Club is a project and at bringing uh, teachers together uh, and providing them with a safe space where they could discuss and share things that matter to them and reflect on uh, a lot of uh, things with uh, like-minded colleagues uh, in a friendly and non-judgmental atmosphere. So now uh, let's get back to our webinar. Uh, so you see our agenda for today. Uh, and please don't be put off by a number of points that we are to cover in the next hour. The thing is that most of them don't take a very long time. And besides, um, I hope that by the end of the webinar, uh, you will understand that uh, most of these ideas uh, will, will come in handy for you sooner or later. Uh, anyway, I'll try to keep it short and sweet. So, um, and in order to segue us into uh, the beginning uh, of what I want to say. Uh, I'd like to um, mention that all of you, all of those teachers that have joined this webinar today, all of those that are going to watch it a bit later, and all of the teachers who actually um, find professional development essential and make time for it during various webinars, conferences, and other events for teachers. Um, the goal is always the same. We want to become a little bit better than we were yesterday. We want to become better teachers, try out new things, uh, be ignited by new ideas, and um, in such a way, um, become a, a better teacher, become a good teacher, the teacher we've always wanted to be. So, and this is sort of segues us into this question, what makes a good teacher? And this is the question I've asked myself throughout my career. And at different points, I would come up with a different answer. But one thing remained unchanged. And it was this image of a teacher um, who like is loaded with materials, resources for various activities they're going to carry out with their students. When they worked as a, uh, like in a college setting, this sort of worked for me as the way I thought it did. Uh, because uh, even though um, I got the results I wanted with my students, uh, I often feel, felt overwhelmed and um, very often uh, it, it was difficult to, to cope uh, with uh, all of those like materials and tasks I had to uh, deliver to my students. Uh, however, it wasn't until um, I started working one-on-one -on -one, uh, online with IT guys that I started suspecting that something was terribly wrong with this idea. I wanted to keep my students enthusiastic and excited about language learning. I was trying so hard to like to dig and like find new interesting resources for them. Uh, but instead of being excited uh, about uh, language learning, very often they felt overwhelmed. And uh, those things that I intended to work well with them turned out to be exactly counterproductive. Obviously, uh, I found uh, eventually I found that they didn't retain the language we were working with, uh, which left them confused uh, as well as myself. So, uh, and I decided to analyze this problem and what was the matter with the way I approached working with them. Um, as a result, I understood that it's not it wasn't about the the materials. Uh, I used with my students, but it was about mindset. Uh, you see this image of a teacher with, you know, this like, mul like multitude of materials prevented me from understanding a different, uh, a different facet of a good teacher, and that is the ability to make the most of out what what we have already. 
this ability to juggle approaches, activities, strategies that we can use with students to facilitate their learning. And once I accepted this image of a good teacher, once I allowed myself to be this way of a teacher, it's when I started getting on the right track. And um, yeah, so basically what we want for our students is to like learn what we offer, the, the, the lectures, structures, and the most importantly, we want them to retain this information to be able to use it uh, in their speech and their writing and uh, like re recall and retrieve this information when they need it. So uh, one of the ways like to, 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 to do this, to help students retain information is to uh, organize this process of moving information from short-term memory to long-term memory. And for this, uh, learners need repeated exposure to and practice of language. Uh, how can we provide this extra practice to our students? Uh, overall, we can speak of two ways. One of them is when um, we deliver this extra practice by using extra materials. However, there are some hidden perils in this approach. Uh, new materials uh, might include new vocabulary and grammar that our students are not aware of or are not yet familiar with, or they might uh, like be based on topics that we are not ready to discuss yet, or that don't complement the topics we've been discussing with our students so far. Another way is uh, resorting to extra strategies and activities that are based on the material we have already studied or worked with. And I believe um, that it's a more effective way to, uh, like to, to, to go for when it comes to providing extra practice for our students. Um, so I believe it sounds familiar. So when uh, we imagine a good lesson, we imagine all sorts of wonderful materials that we can offer to our students. And one of the reasons that we opt for the first way I described, not for the second one, is that this image of a good teacher, it prevents us um, like from understanding or rather than, okay, I mentioned this point, sorry. Okay, so this, the reason why we don't opt for the second um, second way uh, is that we are afraid um, of the situation that our students might get bored uh, with something they have already learned. And that's why we want to offer them something new all the time. Uh, however, uh, research shows that uh, students, especially it is true, when it comes to working with uh, adult students and I work with adult students and I can assure you that um, getting back to the material materials we have studied or worked with uh, makes them more confident eventually in the long run. Uh, please pay attention to uh, like this quote, especially to this idea. It remains true that repetition is central to the development of automaticity. It is also true that for many students, repeating activities is reassuring as it allows for consolidation and development of language already studied. <clears throat> Sorry. A language already studied. So instead of being bored, they feel more confident. And it helps them build more confidence when it comes to language using. And uh, it also has an impact, a very positive impact on their motivation. So one of the ways, um, you know, like we can um, we can use the materials with our students is called recycling. And um, recycling consists in practicing language that learners have seen previously. The recycled language will be reintroduced in a different context or through a different skill. So obviously, uh, just as recycling is a way to save our planet. Uh, from, you know, from trash that is accumulating all the time. Uh, uh, recycling uh, in teaching is a way to save our time, 
and save the nerves of our students who tend to be uh, well, uh, who tend to be like over concerned about uh, the way they use the language. Uh, all right. So, uh, so moving on. Um, so, how do we go about it, right? So, uh, so with recycling, uh, like another point in favor of recycling is this: asking the students to revisit exercises studied in previous lessons to check how much of the language they remember, and to repeat any connected speaking activity gives them the chance to perform better second time around, and can also give the teacher the chance to address any issues that may arise and to add in any new language that may be needed. So as you see, this is um, this goes uh, to show again that uh, repeating uh, same exercises and same tasks um, can uh, pay off in, in the long run by giving your students more confidence with the language. Uh, and uh, just to uh, like finish this um, slightly theoretical part, uh, so I'd like to point out again that recycling lesson materials provides more opportunities uh, to explore language in context. It helps focus students' attention on a specific amount of language material multiple times and in a variety of ways. And as a result, it maximizes retention of language material. Uh, one of the reasons why I got so much inspired with this idea and uh, how I and eventually uh, which eventually helped me to transform the way uh, I teach my students was um, the encounter, a close encounter with lexical approach. Uh, last year I attended if, uh, like a few workshops on lexical approach. And uh, like it opened uh, to me a whole new perspective upon how we can uh, work with uh, lesson materials. A uh, very simply put, very simply put, uh, lexical approach. Uh, the, the, the idea behind lexical approach is that language consists of lexical chunks, and when we teach students to notice them, to uh, memorize them, to learn them, and then use them in speaking, it can help them to develop their fluency accuracy and sound more native-like. Uh, sort of sounds easy peasy lemon squeezy, however, very often it might uh, turn out to be difficult, difficult, lemon <laughs> difficult. Still, uh, even though uh, the idea about lexical chunk, the concept of lexical chunks is, chunks is a core concept, so one of the core concepts in lexical approach, obviously, the whole lexical approach cannot be reduced to uh, only this concept, and there's uh, far more to lexical approach than just the idea of chunks. Uh, so uh, these are some uh, beautiful quotes from the celebrities in this field, and as long as you're going to get this presentation, you will familiarize yourselves with them. And I'm uh, like moving to a more practical part, uh, namely the ideas that we can uh, implement um, when we work with our students. So I'm going to walk you through a process of using a text uh, from pre-text activities, like pre-reading activities, to like a number of follow-up activities that you could use in a series of lessons long before, sorry, long after you have finished working uh, with a certain text. Obviously, uh, if you work with a course book, so you can use course book materials uh, to further like develop um, to develop some uh, new tasks and activities for your students. If you prefer to use authentic materials, uh, so you can, um, I mean, they will come in handy for you as well. Um, for my part, I can say uh, I like resorting to authentic materials. One of my favorite resources is uh, the site breakingnewsenglish.com. Um, for one part, I like it is that it offers um, a lot of uh, news items uh, in, in, in different um, Um, in different levels, and they are also accompanied by uh, 
audios and exercises. Uh, when I use uh, the resources from this site, I don't always use all of the exercises they offer, but I use some of them and I, I develop others that are relevant to my students. Okay, so let's get started. So normally uh, every course book offers a number of activities that precede reading or listening. Uh, however, you can um, make a little twist and um, do something else, uh, an interesting activity, uh, which is called chunk dictation. Uh, so what I normally do is I select um, uh, up to 10 chunks from the text and I uh, use them for dictation. Um, after the dictation is over, I offer students uh, the original list of the chunks so that they could compare it with what they have written and um, check whether they have made any mistakes and we discuss it with them. Uh, if you work with the group, uh, so students can actually compare their lists and discuss them uh, or discuss uh, the, the mistakes in pairs as well. Uh, then we can explore the meaning of every chunk. Uh, sometimes it might be able, uh, sorry, sometimes it might be necessary to pre-teach some of them, like to pre-teach uh, uh, vocabulary. And then uh, using the list of chunks, students um, can further speculate about the topic of the text. Uh, once they have uh, presented some of the ideas, you can reveal the title and ask them to use the chunks uh, in sentences uh, based um, on their predictions. And as they do it, uh, it, it would be a good idea for you to pay attention to the emerging language and uh, correct or relaxicalize so that reformulate um, their sentences if necessary. Obviously then goes reading for best uh, and they compare the, their initial ideas and their predictions with the information they learned from the text. Uh, when they uh, read for specific information, doing true or false questions or open questions, uh, whenever they uh, give their responses, ask them to refer to the text for, like, in order to support their ideas and answers. Uh, you might want to give the students the chance to, uh, to compare their answers in pairs if you work uh, with the group, and then you can round up the answers uh, with the group as a whole. And uh, what normally happens is that they answer the questions correctly, but answering them, they fall back on the lexis and vocabulary that they're familiar with. And they rarely use like new language from the text. That is why your task as a teacher uh, is to relaxicalize their answers, reformulate them according to the text in order to encourage them to use language from the text, and then you can like, drill the sentences uh, together with the group. Um, after, after like this uh, set of questions and tasks based directly on the text, um, we can uh, go, we can proceed to questions loosely connected to the text or theme. Um, then we can, um, uh, offer them questions connected to the language. Uh, such questions uh, either include key phrases that you would like to further practice, like from the text, or they're formulated in such a way that students will have to use these key phrases from the text in their answers. Uh, then, in order to focus on language still further, you can ask questions about the language. Um, you might want to ask them, find, uh, ask them to find collocations of a certain kind. And if you work with the group, you could also add a competitive element to this, um, offering them to um, find a certain number of collocations and uh, break them down into teams, or just uh, say, like, who will be the first to find these five collocations, adjectives plus noun, for example. Uh, or you can ask them to find structures that express this or that, uh, maybe that serve to express certain emotion um, or some other shades of meaning and etc. Uh, not the end, the list goes on. Uh, so the next um, batch of tasks uh, is uh, about, um, you know, like moving to more productive uh, 
you know, types of activities. Uh, so you can use the text to introduce, review, or check certain grammar topics, asking why questions about some structures. For example, why is present perfect used in this sentence? Or why is this structure used? What or what, what is the stylistic effect? I mean, if, if you work with higher levels, so you, you could go for like more complicated ideas. Um, uh, then, uh, like we can practice uh, language from the text, asking students to choose two, three sentences whose structure they like and use these patterns to compose their own sentences. Uh, another activity that could be quite beneficial is reverse translation. Uh, you can arrange it in several ways. First, you uh, students choose sentences themselves and translate them into their mother tongue. And after a while, they get back to them and translate them back into English. And then they compare the translation and the original sentence from the text. Um, another way to go about this task is when a teacher chooses sentences, translates them into the, 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 the first language, and then uh, offers students to translate, paying special attention perhaps to some parts of those sentences that contain, you know, like key lexes from the text. Then we can use, uh, we can offer to write a summary using key phrases. Uh, for example, five sentences that uh, present the, the main points of the text. Um, or ask them to retell the text using key phrases. And we'll be getting to this point a bit later. So th there will be some um, more detailed description of activities that are aimed at text reconstruction. And obviously, uh, if you have worked with the topic of the text enough, uh, you can uh, give students um, more context, uh, like with pictures, for example, or asking them to write a chain story uh, using uh, the Lexis. Uh, now, to homework ideas or independent work ideas. Um, if you remember, um, I mentioned the site breakingnewsenglish.com for, for, for exactly this reason, because they also have accompanying audios. So if you use the resources from this site, uh, you can um, offer students to listen to the same news item at home and do shadowing which is a very useful practice and uh, like for students to do. Or you can ask them to listen and use this as dictation. Uh, you can design some Quizlet activities for them uh, that are aimed at working with collocations, recalling grammar structures or sentence patterns. Um, the same thing here, more um, examples of Quizlet activities are coming a little while later. Um, for higher levels, it makes sense to um, offer tasks aimed at exploring lexes. Uh, uh, oftentimes, uh, texts uh, like for high level students contain um, phrasal verbs or idioms or some um, or vocabulary uh, that uh, is difficult, for example, to use uh, in their own sentences uh, straight away. So they need to be exposed to this lexis more. That is why uh, using uh, resources like Sentence Dict, Phrase It, and Uglish can provide this opportunity for them to uh, find more sentences with these phrases. Uh, the, the, they can look at more context, which will give them more confidence uh, when they try to use this uh, lexis in their own sentences, in writing or in speaking. Obviously, you can offer them some uh, writing prompts aimed at practicing the language material, or you ask them to record a voice message. Uh, in, the, in their voice messages, uh, they can answer questions that have been already um, answer during the lesson, but uh, you can slightly modify or change them or offer some other questions or give them opportunity with the questions they have already answered, uh, just to make sure they uh, structure them in a way that makes use of um, all the lexes you are trying to focus on. Uh, they might as well listen to themselves and think about the ways how they can improve their, um, you know, 
the, the responses. Um, and uh, like I use voice messages with my students very often and uh, I really like the way it works out. So still later on, you might also revisit the, the, the material of the text by offering them this text as a gapped text or closed text. And uh, there's the link that you can uh, use to make different types of uh, gapped texts. Um, another way to, uh, to, to, to do a revision of language is to use language generating questions uh, based on the language items of the text or a vocabulary that uh, like you want to focus on. And uh, more about this is coming a bit later too. Uh, again, getting back to picture prompts to review and practice language material. And if you work with groups or pairs, so revision gam games would come in handy. All right, and now more uh, examples of something I did with my students. Um, this is the text uh, from a workbook, Empower B1 and um, Unit 10, if I remember well, which is called Please Turn Off Your Phones. You don't have to read it now, obviously, so you can uh, take a closer look at it uh, once the webinar is over and you get the presentation. So uh, grammar point here is second conditional and um, vocabulary point is more about uh, is phrasal verbs. Uh, the thing is that this text is offered in um, a revision and extension uh, like part of the unit and the only tasks that go along with this text are aimed at reading comprehension and some um, some discussion uh, questions, uh, like two or three discussion questions. Uh, however, I couldn't uh, like uh, pass, uh, I mean, I, I couldn't let this uh, text, um, um, couldn't let this text, uh, you know, um, leave this text alone with these tasks only. Uh, and th that's what I did. So at uh, first, I focused on some nice collocations that uh, are present there, and I did a collocation match. So I offered a student to like match verbs and something else to make collocations. And then uh, I offered to recall in which context they were used in the text, thus referring to the text once again. And then I used some language generating questions like uh, if we use collocation work effectively. So what helps you work effectively? And then the student will think of like more language. Maybe they will come up with other collocations or phrasal verbs that could be associated with this concept. So, and now a bit more on concept, sorry, language generating questions taken from teaching lexically. So, uh, most typically, this will be questions exploring collocation, co-text, and contextual opposites or antonyms. Uh, they may be questions you already asked the class in a previous lesson, or questions exploring slightly different aspects of usage. And you see some example of this. What does something involve? What kind of things can you do? I mean, if you use a verb, for example, say three different ways, you can do something. Um, the list goes on. Then I wanted to get back to uh, phrasal verbs again. Uh, and I used the sentences from this text. So I uh, took all the sentences that contain phrasal verbs and uh, offered them uh, as, as a gapped text, sorry, as gapped sentences. And I offered my student uh, to uh, complete them. And then we tried, to, as long as the text is about interviewing uh, three people. Um, so like we tried to recall who said what. And then uh, language generating questions followed. Um, another thing that you could do is to, um, so what we did actually is that uh, we had uh, like 
prior to that, uh, like we did uh, an exercise um, to practice uh, phrasal verbs, um, which was about matching sentence halves. So we got back to this exercise, but instead uh, of using this exercise the way it is presented in the book, I um, I only took second halves of um, the sentences and asked a student to restore the first halves. You might as well take the first halves and ask them to restore the second halves. It doesn't matter. So um, in such a way, students focus not only on providing a correct answer or correct or doing correct matching or filling in the gaps in the correct way, but they uh, try to pay more attention to the language and to the sentence as a whole. Oh, by the way, so you can uh, use this activity with Quizlet as well, and uh, more on Quizlet is coming. Um, so, uh, and the quote from Teaching Lexically in, in support of this, encouraging memorization of the language and exercises and repeating the testing, the testing task is a covered way of reminding the students that it is not enough to simply do the exercises, practice them in class and then move on. Instead, they need to notice and try to remember the language and exercises and extend this process over time. If you thought that uh, it was everything we could do, you were mistaken. So something else I did is uh, used I used some sentences to make like sentence frames and have as my student practice uh, these patterns. So it was about conditionals and one sentence was about using uh, um, the structure feel like. So as you see, it begins uh, with, um, you know, uh, so with, with the frame that you could use to actually recall the original sentence, then add your answers. And each time the student has more and more freedom and more space um, you know, for imagination and ideas. Uh, but it's still, I mean, but the, the list of ideas goes on. And um, I remember being very much passionate about using word clouds. And uh, while preparing to this webinar, I kind of reminded, uh, like preparation reminded me of this tool. So using word clouds, so if you, have gone uh, like as far as to, um, you know, like like copy this text and make a gap text. So you can uh, use it to make a word cloud. Uh, so in this word cloud, you can see um, the words used in the first paragraph of of, of the text, and by looking at these keywords, a uh, student might might be asked to reconstruct or just uh, come up with the, the main ideas or what they remember from the text or the first paragraph, so depending on what you present them with. Uh, another way to do text reconstruction with the group is when you get the students to discuss in pairs what they remember about the text and then elicit ideas from the whole group, reformulating when necessary, to ensure recycling of the language that was actually used in the text. So this kind of retelling forces the students to meet language a step up from what they currently produce and pushes them to start taking on some of this new language. Uh, another activity for revision um, is taken from uh, the blog ELT Geek. So, uh, so it goes um, as follows. Students work with the text and mine it for lexis, meaning they select um, collocations and other lexical chunks. Then they organize them in a mind map. And at home, they work with the mind map, trying to memorize as much as possible. When they get back to the next uh, lesson, they try to recreate the mind map in pairs, for example and then they use it to retell the text. Uh, 
Quizlet is one of my favorite tools to use with students. And I started using it much more since I um, learned and found out how um, recalling um, is important uh, for you know, retaining information um, we come across. And um, as it is put in teaching lexically, there is plenty of evidence that consciously trying to recall language, not just passively seeing it, can speed up the process of retaining language in our long-term memory. So I'm going to show you some examples of cards I do for my students. So the, the, the most, I mean, the easiest way, obviously, is when you introduce um, a lexical item, right? Uh, and then on the other side, you provide a translation or a, or a short synonym. But then you can go further and uh, show uh, the gapped sentence. And uh, you can either provide the first, so initial letters of the words that are missing, or uh, you can leave them out. And uh, students uh, can work by themselves, or during the class, you can use these sentences for a quick revision be before you do some other tasks. At first, you show them uh, the gap sentence, and they have to think of uh, the vocabulary item they need to complete it. Uh, you can also generate a written test in Quizlet, uh, and they will have to uh, like type all the answers. Uh, then we could go for question that would sort of like point to the vocabulary item they will need to use in the in the response. Then you can break sentence into halves and go show them one half and they come up with the second half or vice versa. Uh, then you can have this sentence frame uh, with all the missing words and you can have initial letters for some missing missing words and you have them reconstruct the whole sentence you can add an interesting twist to this task and generate um a phonetic like a phonetic transcription and uh, they need to restore the expression of the sentence using phonetic transcription uh, then you uh, can um, use the sentence with a word they already learned and the sentence with the words they are trying to learn, right? So want to, I mean, everybody knows want to, but feel like, not everybody uses feel like. Um, so in such a way, uh, showing them that English has a number of ways of expressing the similar concept. Uh, and uh, one more thing you could do is that is um, providing sort of a definition uh, in the on, on the one side uh, with the lexical item missing. Like when you banana things, you decide to do them later. Okay, it's put off. Okay, so uh, I was talking about revision games, um, and uh, like here are like a few, which is called banana or beep, something I did with, uh, like something uh, I did with the last uh, card. Um, discussion gap fills, dominoes, guess my word, gotcha. I believe you must have heard of some of these games. And, uh, but I'm not going to go in more detail about them. Uh, instead, there's a link that you could use to take a look at the detailed description of each of these games and uh, you will find not only them but not much more than that. And if you have gone as far as to um, make uh, like various Quizlet sets uh, for your students, you can spice up those tasks using some of the online tools. For example, instead of just asking like warm up questions or revision questions, you can use Pick a Wheel. Uh, it's a tool that, uh, like a fortune wheel, and it allows you to choose random uh, sector with the question. Um, the, the game Millionaire like could um, 
uh, make multiple choice questions more exciting. And uh, Jeopardy uh, could add more competitive um, elements uh, into your group lessons. Um, using bingo cards for a variety of activities uh, could be another way to have students recall language and then use it uh, in more productive uh, tasks. Uh, if you um, like, if you like the idea of using a uh, transcription uh, for Quizlet sets, uh, the tool that will help you generate transcription is called PhoTransit. So all of these are clickables. You will be able to. Uh, use these links to uh, visit these sites. And uh, like if you lack ideas um, for writing prompts for your students, uh, you can use a tool that generates interesting first lines for story writing or storytelling activities. Uh, whatever you choose to do with your students, uh, it is important to understand that uh, whenever you uh, proceed to uh, dealing with new material, you always uh, like it's always a good idea to make and show connections with something they have already learned. And you can do it in a number of ways by drawing parallels, by reminding them of synonyms or antonyms that they have previously learned. Um, you can work with word families. Uh, for example, in the previous lesson, you came across a noun and today you came across a verb or an adjective. So you make connections. Uh, like in this way. And obviously, uh, teaching them uh, the power of paraphrasing like pays off in the end, especially if they decide to uh, take an exam uh, where paraphrasing skills um, are extremely important. So, um, dear colleagues, um, thank you very much for your attention. Um, I encourage you to make wise choices and obviously stay in touch. Okay, thank you very much for this wonderful webinar. Actually, I should tell you that I was noting everything and I have my notes right now. And I, I do want to start using some of those activities you mentioned for the next lesson, actually, for tomorrow. So um, could I ask you just to stop sharing your screen? Is it possible? Okay. Um, yeah, great. So it was really productive. I like everything, just every single word. And I should tell you that we have yeah, Miss Olga Volkova. Thanks indeed. Yeah, really, it was very nice. And guys, I'd like to ask you if it's possible, please could you type in comments uh, what country you are from? Because while talking, Miss Ina couldn't see any comments, and I believe she will be able to do it a bit later. But I'd like her to know which countries we had during the webinar. Uh, let me tell you that we started with Turkey, the first country, Turkey, Ukraine, obviously. Then we had Georgia, we had Morocco, um, Iran as well. Then I saw Myanmar. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Can you imagine? Uh, it's actually another part of the world. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we had Kazakhstan. I saw yeah, Ukraine. Thanks, Miss Olga. Morocco, Ukraine. You see South Africa. Thank oh. you, Miss Lara. Thank you very much. We do hope it was productive for you. Uh, again, Ukraine, thank you for your support. Well, some familiar faces <laughs> <colleagues. well. laughs> yeah, so many countries. It's really wonderful that people came and decided to participate in this webinar. So, and here you have. Um, such comments like thank you for this insightful investment. Um, I'd like to remind you firstly that after this webinar, I'd like to ask you actually um, to write your feedback on any social um, web page, I mean Instagram or Facebook, and use this hashtag SR Webinar More. Do you remember why more? Because today's session is when less is more. This is why we'll be able to find you on Instagram and on Facebook, and um, just to keep in touch. And also, I do believe that it will be nice for Miss Ina to read your feedbacks as well. That's yeah. And then um, I sent you a message uh, in the 
chat box where you can find Miss Ina on Instagram. It's like English underscore vocabulary. Please don't hesitate. Just uh, send her a message. Ask about teacher talking teachers club. Also visit the highlights um, and check all the reviews there as well as well as the agenda. Um, tomorrow. Uh, I will send you an email with the presentation uh, as well as with the presentation I showed it before Ms. Ina started presenting her um, topic. So, I have more comments. Yeah, can you see that? We have so many countries. Thank you, Ms. Mariana. So, guys, thank you very much. Ms. Ina, thank you very much. <laughs> And, <laughs> and also, I'd like to remind you that next next Thursday, we're going to have another free webinar with Miss Lana Betts from Cambridge. And she's going to share her ideas um, how to teach our students to write creatively. Um, we'll be talking about figurative language, about different ways how to make our students to start thinking outside the box. Yeah, you can see Emirates as well. Thank you very much. So, see you next. <laughs> Thank you. See you next Thursday. Come and join. We are always very happy to see you and to see how active you're participating in this webinar. Thank you very much. I have to end this broadcast, but I do hope to see you soon.